What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you some varieties that you can be direct sowing in mid-April that I was called an idiot for wanting to get started. That's right. To give you some background context as to why I was called an idiot, Michigan recently declared gardening to be a non-essential service. A lot of garden centers, uh, uh, big box stores that had nurseries were forced to close. They were forced to actually gate off and rope off those areas to people that wanted to get gardening supplies. And I took slight issue to this because I am uh, I am all for people growing their own food. And anything that prohibits someone from growing their own food I, you know, I have an issue with. I have to because this channel has always been about getting you back to growing your own food, getting connected with the food that you eat, and also saving money and uh, just producing higher quality vegetables for your family's table. That's what this channel has always been about since 2011. And so uh, when Michigan declared that and that happened, I wrote an open letter to the governor of Michigan. You can go see that letter over on Facebook. And there were quite a few people that said, Luke, you're an absolute idiot for wanting to uh for wanting to uh to take issue to this because most people don't even have their gardens started yet other people said luke you're a total fool for recommending that people start their gardens right now there's no need to rush out and get your seeds because you can't even be starting seeds for another month other people said uh <laughs> along the same lines luke you're about the stupidest gardener i've ever seen we just got snow last night so uh with all those kind comments uh, being thrown at me, I thought I'd at least just share with you just how stupid I am because uh, the fact of the matter is spring doesn't wait for a quarantine. <laughs> Seeds don't care uh, what's, what's deemed essential and non-essential. Seeds will continue to sprout when the time is right. And the fact of the matter is, is the time has been right for about a week now. I'll show you real quick the seeds that we, uh, that we started about two weeks ago, direct sowing in the ground, two weeks ago. And it was in a video done uh, that was titled, uh, Seeds You Can Still Start With Snow on the Ground. Those seeds have since germinated and are growing, believe it or not. So they must be stupid too, but we're gonna make sure, we're gonna go and salt them first before we start these seeds. I'm excited for today's video. I hope you guys are as well. We're gonna turn this, turn this whole train around into an optimistic path and get you all direct sowing seeds because it is honestly one of the best ways to get an earlier start to your garden. If you're, if you're picking cold hardy varieties that are going to do well in cold weather, the best time to start them is as early as possible, as soon as you can work the soil. Because the sooner you can work the soil, the sooner you can plant, the sooner they're going to sprout, and the sooner they're going to grow. And because they're cold weather crops, they're going to thrive in your cold weather where other crops wouldn't. And that means you can grow these crops and harvest them for food when your other crops are inside or, or just getting started because the weather is not warm enough for those yet. Tomatoes, peppers, uh, you know, zucchinis, cucumbers, your, uh, your warm weather crops, those are all inside in, under our grow lights. Or uh, if you don't have those, you're probably starting them on your windowsill or maybe you're just starting them, just beginning to start them in little, uh, in little three packs on your back porch. And while you're getting those plants growing, you could be growing food for your family. So let's go check out the, the plants that are way too stupid to have uh, germinated because clearly they're not following the rules. And then we'll get to uh, direct sowing some more seed uh, basically in succession. It'll be a lot of the same plants, but we're gonna direct sow those crops uh, right now so that uh, we can have a kind of a, a, a staggered harvest throughout the growing season. That way we're not getting everything all at once. We're getting a nice prolonged harvest that we can enjoy from. All right, let's go. Hey, lettuce, don't you know you were deemed non-essential? Hey, you weren't supposed to sprout. Garlic, didn't you get the memo? Gardening apparently doesn't start until May 1st. Oh my gosh, you cilantro are so dumb. Are you kidding me? Gardening doesn't start until May 1st. Didn't you get the memo? Ugh, you silly, silly radishes. I knew you never got the memo. Jeez. And you rebellious son of a beat. Dang it, I cannot believe you're sprouting right now. Are you kidding me? It's not time to sprout yet. Get back into dormancy, right now. You have got to be kidding me. Based on the current state of affairs, you are sprouting way too early. Silly goose, Barry. You need to be back in dormancy. Don't do this to me, onions. Don't you do this to me. If you don't get back in the ground, you're gonna make me cry. Turn ups? How about turn down into the ground? Excuse me, don't you care at all about this quarantine? Oregano, no, it's not time to sprout. As you can see, I've got some pretty rebellious plants. I tried talking them out of growing, but they just didn't wanna listen. <laughs> and so with that being said, it's time to start some more. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncover this bed here. This is where we're gonna be direct sowing the rest of our spring crops. I've got a mulch on the bed right now, and I always encourage you to leave mulch on your garden as long as you can. Assuming you're gonna be growing high intensity, mulch actually can be a deterrent to plant health. Um, if you have too much mulch, what can happen is it can hold on to moisture and your plants are gonna be growing really closely together. And so they can sometimes lead to mold and mildew. And it also encourages things like slugs and snails to come into your garden as well. So uh, what I need to do is I need to uncover them. If you're planting in really traditional, uh, really traditional style rows with, with wide spacing, which is, and that's up to you how you grow, but how we grow is very high intensity. There's really no, uh, there's really no soil left. By the time the plants mature up, it's actually a, like a living mulch. So uh, that's how we grow. And that's why we have to uncover this, this bed here. We have to get the mulch off. We're gonna throw it in the compost pile so it won't go to waste. It's just gonna continue breaking down. It'll be food for the plants later. But uh, we're gonna get this bed uncovered. That way we can expose the soil so we can start direct sowing seed. So just as I was finishing up taking the mulch off this bed and putting it all in my wheelbarrow, I looked down and I realized that my garlic bed did not have any mulch in it. So it worked out perfectly. I'm not gonna have to move my mulch very far at all. I'm just gonna take my wheelbarrow, set it over here, and I'll do that later. I'll take the mulch and I'll put it on my garlic bed because the garlic needs some coverage because the bulbs actually do well. They get larger if you can keep the soil nice and damp throughout the growing season. So they're really gonna benefit from, from some mulch. So therefore, um, I'm just gonna do that later and it's a total win-win situation. Not only did I clear a bed and get it ready for planting, but then I'm finishing a bed and getting it ready to mature. So really a total win-win all around and a double, triple win because the sun just came out. So, oh, it feels so good. Just, ah, human solar panel, human solar panel. Oh, I love it. All right, let's get to planting. So the first plant that we're gonna get planted are kale baby greens. I'm so excited to do this on this channel because we've never done it before and we've done it, but never in video form. And so I'm gonna be showing you how to sow kale seeds if you're gonna be using them for baby greens. I know you guys get those, those spring mixes from the store and you all say, Luke, how do I get kale that's so beautiful and perfect for little salad mixes? Well, baby greens is how. You sow them extra dense and therefore when they grow up, they basically grow up like lettuce and then you just cut and come again, just like you would lettuce, the, the tiny kale greens that grow up. So you can get a lot of production out of a small amount of space. So we're gonna grow some kale baby greens. The next plant that we're gonna grow is some spinach. We're gonna be planting another succession of spinach. We started some in, in the house. We started some in our raised bed that's just starting to germinate. And so uh, we're gonna start some more spinach and that way we have, like I said, a staggered harvest all throughout the season. A plant that you can be growing, that you can direct sow right now that we already have our plant started inside, but so we're not gonna start any more today, is some, uh, is some cabbage. You can actually grow some cabbage right in the ground right now. Very cold hardy, they can handle freezes, handle frost, start in, in uh, mid-April, especially if you don't have any grow lights or the ability to start them inside, start them outside. They'll start growing probably within the next five, seven days. They'll germinate very quickly and they grow super well in cold weather. The next one that we are gonna get started today are some more peas. We have, sp we have some spring blush peas. We also have some, uh, some sugar snap peas. We're gonna get these started today because uh, some peas love cold weather. We have some started inside as well, but I, like I said, I wanna get a nice succession going so that as one plant is maturing, the other one is just coming into maturity. And that way we're gonna have a nice prolonged harvest. We have some more spinach, some American spinach. Make sure my packets don't start blowing away on me. It's so windy today. Um, some Viroflay spinach and some beets. Beets are another great crop that you can direct sow right in the ground. As you saw, we have some germinating already. We have some in the house. So I'm gonna start the next succession right in the ground right now. And they'll be ready by probably early June. They'll be ready to harvest. So uh, very, well, probably mid to late June for these ones. Um, we're gonna be first harvesting our very first beets uh, from the very first succession we planted probably in early June. So uh, we're gonna get those because we're talking 45 to 50 days to maturity. The next thing that we're gonna be direct sowing that you can start as well are radishes. These are our two favorite varieties of radishes, the French breakfast and the cherry bell. They're just a very, uh, a very sweet radish when it comes to uh, overall spiciness. Um, they do have that radish flavor, but not as much of that kick and bite that some people enjoy and others don't. So uh, my family enjoys the sweeter radishes, so we're gonna get both of those planted today. Then we're also gonna get some carrots started. 
Carrots are another great crop that I recommend you grow in early spring. As soon as you can work the soil, get them in the ground. Carrots love cool soil. They love damp soil. They do not like growing in dry, hot soil. They, they in fact, uh, germinate very poorly. So we're gonna get some more in the ground. They're gonna do very, very well for us in this raised bed here. And so this is the Atomic Red, the Imperator, and the Danvers 126 Carrot. And then the final thing that we're gonna start is our lettuce. We've been known to grow some beautiful, beautiful rows of lettuce here on the channel. Go check out some past videos about cut and come again and high intensity growing. You guys always say, Luke, you have probably some of those beautiful beds of lettuce that I've ever seen. And so that's because we pick a huge variety of colors and textures and types and we sow just our, our rows very closely together. We sow them, uh, you'll see how I sow them, but we sow them about three or four inches apart in our rows and our seeds are spaced about one inch apart. And that way when they grow up, they grow up and out and they cover the soil, high intensity. They cover the soil, they mulch the soil so weeds can't sprout up, water can't evaporate, and you're maximizing your yield. And then when we harvest, we harvest all for leaves. We don't harvest for heads, we harvest for leaves. And then we can harvest pretty much uh, until like early July. So I just got all of my lettuce planted. As you can see, my rows are about four inches apart and I just basically sprinkled in the seeds very gently so that, uh, so that they had about one inch spacing per seed. And then when they grow up, they're ultimately gonna grow up and support themselves so that they grow up like a thick mat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply gonna make some more rows to plant uh, my carrots, uh, my, uh, my kale, and my spinach, and my radishes all in this bed. My peas are gonna go along my pea trellis. So you guys have seen that in past videos, but really there's not a whole lot more to, uh, to planting. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. These were all the plants that you could grow in April. And obviously there are a lot more that I did not include that are kind of one-offs. You know, things like, you know, I guess you can include uh, herbs like cilantro is another great one. Um, onions, onions are a great one if you haven't grown those yet, but uh, you should be starting those inside just to get them up and growing. But you can start them in the ground as well. They're very cold hardy. Um, you could even grow things like, um, you know, uh, chives, chives are kind of in that onion family. Um, just trying to, you know, kind of round off the, the list, but pretty much everything I mentioned are things you can be growing. Now, I know the question is gonna come up about broccoli. Broccoli is a cold hardy crop, but not one that I'd recommend sowing early in the season. And the reason why is because if you sow broccoli in the early season, it gets warm very quickly, and that, that temperature change actually causes it to be shocked so that it goes to seed too early. And that going to seed too early means you're not gonna get a nice large head. So wait until about early June to plant your, uh, your broccoli. That way it's gonna be growing through the warmer part of the season, but there's not as many dramatic temperature changes to shock it. So you're gonna actually get better results by waiting on broccoli. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. And thank you guys for tuning in for this episode. I hope you guys laughed along, had some fun, and hopefully you all are getting to direct sow some seeds wherever you're at. Um, even if you can't direct sow seeds, Getting out in the garden is one of the most important things for not only your mental health, but your physical health. So I hope you guys are getting out, growing bigger, going home. And uh, let me know in the comments box below what you're sowing in your gardens right now, where you're at. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And we'll catch you all on the next episode. Grow bigger, go home, everyone. Bye. All right. It's carrot time.